the things that, that uh, you've talked about uh, before and I've seen in your writings is the importance of sharing information a around the globe. Uh, and so in terms of thinking about where we are today with, with even understanding what's going on, um, I wonder if you could, sh you could just show us a tool that you have with the, ah. with, with the council and, and sure. what's being done there. Yeah, and, and this is something that we developed at the Council on Foreign Relations. It's totally open source and you can embed this in your website. We encourage you to do so and if you do, it will every week be updated automatically on any website in the world. What we tried to do was start tracking outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases, the key, the big ones, like measles and pertussis, polio, and so on. So if we, what we did was we started inputting data back in 2008. And if you look at the world in 2008, you actually don't see very many outbreaks of these classic vaccine-preventable diseases, and most of them are either in the countries that were the most affected by propaganda put out by a gentleman named Andrew Wakefield in uh, the UK who claimed that you got autism from certain vaccines. And so you see these huge circles of outbreaks, mostly in the UK area, um, all related to families declining to let their children be vaccinated under the false premise that they were protecting them from autism. Well, if you go now forward in time, so let's go out to uh, 2012, all the way to the end and have the cumulative picture, if, uh, if we could. Not just the outbreaks for that year, but all. Okay, there we go. Wow. Mm. Now, first of all, you see there's a whole lot more vaccine-preventable outbreaks. And the size of the bubble tells you the magnitude of the numbers of people that were affected. But look at the difference. What, what is the green? It's whooping cough. That's the USA. And this is all families declining to vaccinate. And almost all these outbreaks are in wealthy communities, pockets of upper middle class wealth in the United States. Then it spreads from there. Whereas if you go over into the poorer world, such as Africa, what you're looking at predominantly is measles and secondarily um, some whooping cough and other uh, diseases. And here it's really about the supply chain, the logistics difficulties in delivering vaccine on a regular schedule, getting the boosters to the right children. Um, and now the one we're really worried about is if you go all the way over to, to India and Pakistan, uh, the real concern now is that we're down to the last 1% annually of polio cases left in the world. We've eradicated 99% of the world's burden of polio. I don't think we have an actual polio. If we do, it's that orangish color. Uh, but what we're seeing now is that this is the part of the world where polio is stuck. And it's Pakistan and Afghanistan. And it takes us to a, another political dynamic mm -hmm. that we have not figured out how to solve. And that is um, trust. So as right. the former director of the CDC, you know what trust means. And you've had congressmen and senators attacking you and claiming, you know, the CDC doesn't protect my people's health and blah, blah, blah. Well, imagine it if the CIA used a vaccine ruse, a phony vaccine campaign, to try and get DNA samples from the Osama bin Laden family in Pakistan. Well, last week, two things happened. The fellow, the poor physician that had agreed to collude with the CIA in a phony dummy vaccine campaign was convicted of treason and 33 years imprisonment in Pakistan. And that happened the very same day that WHO declared with polio we're in a state of global emergency.